Mr. Black. <clears throat> Good morning, Your Honors. I would like to start, um, which is essentially um, issue number eight on my brief, which is which is uh, on page 57, which is the question uh, related to um, the trial judge allowing repeated testimony from two, at least two late witnesses as to the defendant, um, as to the defendant's mental uh, state in a case where essentially the only issue in this case was in its, its in a criminal responsibility defense. There were, there were two questions uh, asked by the um, victim's mother and father, um, the, the biological father and the biological mother. And, and the, question, the question was phrased, did you ever notice anything about the defendant that's unusual that would call, call into question his insanity? And our argument is that that question is improper. The uh, question to the father was, did he appear to have anything wrong with his mental faculties? Also, arguing that that question is improper. Was he objected to? Yes, it was. What objected happened? to, I believe. Allowed? The Allowed question to was answer? objected to and overruled by the trial judge. Yes. And I believe both of them were. And what were the answers to the questions? He was normal. Fine. So. What and harm these, these witnesses were people who knew the defendant, correct? Yes. What yeah. was the harm with that? Yeah. Well, there are cases in, in, in Massachusetts, and, 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 and not in every jurisdiction, but there are cases by this court, and, and I cited them, Commonwealth versus Monaco and Commonwealth versus Schultz, that says it, that, says that um, a person's sanity or insanity, um, a lay person is precluded from testifying to a person's uh, sanity or insanity. And again, this is the only issue in this case. Um, certainly, a person is allowed to testify as to one's observations, but I believe that's not what these questions are asking for, and that's not what the, the, how, the answers, um, how the answers come forward. There was a specific question. Do you have any, basically, I mean, he didn't ask about, of course, he didn't ask it in the, in, in, in the course of, do you have an opinion? Because that would be, that would, that would definitely be improper. But the question was phrased, um, outside of your observations of the defendant where he had been drinking or where he had been arguing with the victim, did you ever notice anything unusual about the defendant that would call into question his insanity? Now, how is this particular person able to, able to testify about, insanity is a term of art. It's, 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 it's akin to criminal responsibility. Well, the question is totally bollocks. Call into question his insanity? Was that the question? That's the question. That's the question. Well, I mean, I, I assume he should. You know, the answer was no. The, the trial, which was fairly lengthy, had tons of expert evidence, didn't it? Well, it had, I wouldn't say tons, actually. Well, each had, side called one, each yeah. side called one expert. So the jury's well aware of what the issue is, and here they get an answer from whoever it was, parent or somebody, that says, no, he appeared normal to me. That was the answer. Pretty small potatoes. The answer was, he always seemed normal. To, well, it bolsters the Commonwealth's case. Here you have a, a battle of an expert where you have two, two separate experts. Okay. One saying he, one saying he um, there's an issue of criminal responsibility. One saying that he was criminal responsible. There, there was a third, I think there was a third expert who was basically the referring, the referring expert who referred him to Bridgewater and said there was an issue and, and, and he went to, but he didn't form, he didn't actually testify to an opinion. He said that there were issues involving his mental, mental state. So if the question had been, did you ever see the, your son exhibit abnormal behavior? And the answer was no. That question would have been all right, wouldn't it? That would probably be all right, or did you, or, or, or could you describe to the, I think, I think preferably, could you describe to the court uh, any observations that you made of the defendant that, that, that uh, seemed weird to you, seemed strange to you, seemed, you know. Or just the, describe his demeanor. But, but, but the, and the answer here was, it was normal. Was, if, if they had asked a proper question and gotten that answer, would you be here with that it, same answer? But it wasn't. The problem was the answer is to a specific question, question and yeah. the question actually asked about his insanity. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 an awkward it's an awkward subject, uh, and I'm just wondering if it, is a jury going to walk away feeling that with the sense that these people have really been called as experts, or is it 
Are they going to are they going to take this testimony for what it really is, which is simply a, a civilian's observation about a person's demeanor, about a person who they know well? Well, I think I think that could have easily been done, and I yeah, agree, it could I agree have been. with 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 both your honors that it was it was awkward. And and the, and the second question is actually the second one is actually even I think more awkward. Um, do you notice anything wrong with his mental faculties? I mean, first of all, what is that? And 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 second of all, that is also. A term of art. It's not. It's not asking for. Well, I don't know. People can make good observations about mental faculties. It seems to me, that does go to things like, no, you responded uh, coherently. He seemed oriented. You know, he uh, knew who I was. Uh, made sense. Uh, mental faculties seems to me something that people who know a person can talk about. I'm not sure in the ordinary course of, uh, I know lawyers maybe, but in the ordinary course of conduct, I'm not, I don't think we're going to have people sitting over the dinner table and saying, you know, so-and-so's mental faculties are odd. Somebody's going to say, he, he, he's weird. He acts strange. No, but I think they know what that term means and that, that again, it calls for, have you seen any, any odd behavior, confused, disoriented, um, does he not comprehend things? I think most people know what insanity means too, but I think I think it is prohibited to ask a layperson opinion of that subject. Now, we, can a layperson be asked? Did he seem confused? Did he did he exhibit behavior that to you seemed confused? No, just did he seem confused? Did he seem confused? Maybe in a specific context, but but again, put, put it this way: we know what's going on here. We, I mean, he's saying I was mentally ill, and Correct. there are two ways that the Commonwealth is trying to attack this. One, I'm going to get my experts to persuade the jury that he wasn't mentally ill, but second, I'm going to suggest that this is a trumped up post hoc um, explanation for this terrible killing. Let's assume that the second is a valid attack. You know, it's, it just, it's, a, it's a classic attack. Sometimes it's called malingering when you're addressing it to an expert. But you can ask uh, whether or not there have been any signs that people who know this person very well would suggest that, that there was something a little, you know, and then you choose it, you know, along with the mental faculties, confused, you know, I acting agree. strange. I agree that it could have been asked in that fashion. But I, I surmise that it wasn't. It was asked in, in, in what was already been described to me by, by two of the justices as awkward. And, and I agree with that. It was not only awkward, it was asked in a way that seemingly is asking for an opinion from a lay, witnesses, lay witness, which is specifically I prohibited in this court. I was getting on the question that you said, was, was there anything wrong with his mental faculties? That's number two. That was witness number two. I, I, have, I have issues with that question also. But the first one actually specifically mentions insanity, and where he brain, says yeah. he's norm, appears normal to me. I mean, how does she know what normal is, especially in response to an insanity question? That is the issue of the case. That was the whole issue of this case. He didn't have any other defense. This was a, this was a, a, a horrible murder that occurred in front of, you know, many witnesses, and and he wasn't ever doubting. You know, he wasn't ever contesting that this this was the case. And now the Commonwealth was allowed to produce two lay witnesses that bolstered their only one expert witness. I suggest that was error, but I'll move on with, with, the, uh, with the next issue. He, uh, she, and, and, I, and, I, and this, was, um, this was number nine and number ten, but for two different reasons. She was allowed, um, a officer, I'm sorry, Officer Witherall was allowed to testify as to conversations he had with uh, the victim. I first alleged that these conversations were in violation of Crawford and, and Sixth Amendment. Of course, this incident occurred in 2000. Crawford came out in 2004. Was there an objection? There was an objection. Um, there was an objection, and under this court's law, of course, if, if the case is, on, is continuing on while on, on direct appeal and it was an objection, then, then I believe there was a retroactive application. Now, I will say to you uh, that the objection, he stood up and he said objection. He didn't say I object under Sixth Amendment grounds. He stood up and he said, I object. 
the judge immediately interrupted him and said, no, 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 it comes in under spontaneous utterance, under excited utterance, and just and moved on. He could, wasn't... Could I ask for a factual clarification, though? Sure. If I, if I understand this correctly, this is her statements about a particular event uh, where she claimed the defendant had attacked her in some fashion. There were two, two separate incidents. Two separate incidents. Correct. Weren't both of them witnessed by other people who also testified? about these precise incidents? About the incidents that occurred in October and November, um, I believe so. Yeah, so in other words, this, whether it's a Crawford problem or whether it wasn't really a spontaneous utterance or whatever might have been wrong with it was cumulative of what was properly testified to by I others, wasn't it? I wouldn't disagree that, that <sighs> There were eyewitnesses to, I believe, both of those incidences. And, and matter of fact, I think the police officer actually, the police officer on the second incident walked in while part of the incident was still was still going on. I, I, I believe that the victim of the um, of the uh, assault with intent to murder, the the uh, the father, was actually still on top of the uh, the defendant for, holding him down. Wasn't this introduced not for the truth? Commonwealth uh, says it was not introduced for the truth of it, was it? She said, well, the judge said she was letting it in for all purposes, didn't she? The, the, the judge, uh, who was Judge Brady, um, said that he was introducing it um, not for the truth, but for uh, purposes to show the relationship between the parties. Yeah. So, no Crawford. I still believe there's a Crawford issue in, in, in this case. Uh, there was, there was a, a, a denial of his right to cross-examine uh, her. Excuse me, Mr. Black. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I can also ask the court. I thought that she, that he, Brady, let it in for all purposes, and the Commonwealth now argues that in any event it would have been proper to come in for relationship. You are right. He made a statement that, you're correct, he made a statement that I'm going to let it in for all purposes. That That's is the one about the, def the incidents of the defendant attacking her. Correct. Okay. There's another one. There was something about statements she made about wanting to leave the defendant. That was part. That was a separate. No, it was part of the same incident. There was an incident in October, first of all, and November, where the defendant attacked her on both occasions. Both occasions, the same officer was called. His name was Brian Witherall, I believe. And on the, on the first occasion, I think it was, it was, it was, it was a uh, broader, broader incident. And, and she had a long discussion with him about he kicked me while I was down, he, he you know, beat me, he hit me, he, he's, he's preventing me from doing things, I want to leave, he's drunk, I just want to get out of here. The second incident was a little bit shorter. I think the second incident, uh, he was on the ground, and, and, and she just said, I'm tired of him. I want to leave. I, I want to leave. Well, again, wasn't there abundant evidence from other people about the fact that she wanted to break off the relationship, that the defendant knew it, that the defendant was upset about it? Oh, yeah. We have people having conversations with the defendant about she wants to leave you, you should move on with your there. life and let it go. I mean... This seems to be cumulative in the extreme. I'm not sure how. There is no argument from, from me, because I can't argue, that, that there wasn't a lot of other evidence about a lot of other incidences and a lot of other conversations that occurred throughout this case. It, it, it's, 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 you're right. It's, 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 it's full. So wouldn't this even be, be it seems to me, it would be harmless beyond a reasonable doubt it would meet the, even the very highest standard we would ever apply. Well, I argued in the brief that, that first of all, some of, these, some of these things that came in shouldn't have come in. Um, maybe some of them, them could have, but, but a, lot of, a lot of the incidences that, and even Judge Brady mentioned, uh, Judge Brady, Brady called the counsel sidebar at, at one point and said, I'm really troubled by the general nature of this testimony. What, 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 what he allowed to come in was witness after witness after witness to t telling the jury how horrible of a human being this guy was uh, without referring to specific. Now, there were a couple specific incidences that, that yes, he was allowed to testify to, but, he, but they also testified, you know, this guy was a bad guy. He was drunk all the time. He always inhibited um, the, uh, the victim's behavior. He didn't let the victim go anywhere. Uh, he was slovenly. He, uh, he lived off of the work of her. She, he never worked. On and on and on, witness after witness after witness. And 
I argued in, 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 in the next section that under, under um, clear black letter law under Helfand that that is acts of, uh, of, 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 of prior bad acts that just go for one reason and one reason only to slander his character. Now, when you add all of this up, when you add her conversations, when you add this, this, this prior bad act testimony that probably shouldn't have come in, I argue that, that it, is, it is prejudicial error. I mean, there are specific incidences. I mean, they were even allowed to, there was a specific incidence in May, which, it, which was seven months prior to this, where he supposedly attacked a, 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 a guy, a, a man who, um, not supposedly, but, but he attacked a man who was supposedly sleeping with the, with the victim. And he ran into the house and chased him around. And, and again, the police came, came into that. And he was allowed to testify to that. I mean, that's seven months old. I mean, I would argue that even that is old and stale and, and a prior bad act and shouldn't have come in in this case. And what we have is piles of this evidence in this case. And the cumulative aspect of all of this, I believe, is, is extremely prejudicial and troublesome to me. The last... I argue many different issues, but, but, but the one issue that I would like to go into um, the, the, the um, trial counsel asked the judge to voir dire about and he, and, he, and he brought forward in writing six questions related to um, victims of abuse. And he asked for them to be um, individually voir dired about these questions. The judge individually voir dired, conducted an individual voir dire about race because this was a cross-racial couple, as he was supposed to. He also individually voir dired as to insanity, which, which was also required. Not only did he refuse to add this uh, line of questions regarding, um, uh, regarding abuse, individually, which he could have very easily just added a question or two, he never asked the jury generally these questions in any way, shape, or form. And they're just, I would argue that in this case where, where, where the whole, you've just heard, and you mentioned, Your Honor, that there's all this evidence about abuse. And the whole system of Wadair is designed to, to elicit this kind of prejudice. He refused to ask any questions. Um, could you be impartial in a case with uh, violence against women? Um, have you ever been a victim of abuse? Have you ever worked for a rape crisis uh, or an abuse crisis center? Um, do you believe that the system is unfair um, against, against uh, uh, victims of abuse? He didn't ask any of them. Not only did he ask, didn't he ask any of them individually, and I would, I would urge this court to, to consider at least expanding um, the doctrine of individual, uh, required individual voir dire to, 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 cons to uh, include this, this, this kind of questioning, because I think the, I think the um, potential for prejudice is just huge. But he didn't ask it generally. And I would argue that in this case, that, that in, with these facts, that would constitute a, um, an abuse of discretion. There are many other issues, but if the court has no other questions, I will rest on my brief. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Black. Thank you. Mr. Connolly. I may please the court. William Connolly for the Commonwealth. Your Honor, this case it's about control, it's about power, it's about jealousy. So, so why didn't the judge ask individual questions or do an individual voir dire on the question of abuse? He didn't need to, Your Honor. There was no abuse of discretion in that regard. He, he asked questions which would <clears throat> elicit, I think he used the word ferret out, uh, anyone with a bias. Uh, I think he followed the law at the time. Uh, there was simply no abuse in, in, in that regard. The 
Do we know whether any of the jewelers had in fact been victims of domestic abuse? There was, I believe, Your Honor, one witness in the Venari who was uh, called in the individual, you know, in the each one, and that person was um, dismissed. Did, did the jury get some? Uh, did he give the jury some information about the case before he asked the question? Yes. Did he let them know that? Did, did that information include? the fact that this was the domestic violence? Well, they, they knew it was a stabbing of a girlfriend, wasn't that it? Yes. And, yeah. uh, did that, did, did right. any of the jurors come up in response to what I assume was the general question, is there any reason why you couldn't be fair and impartial? Did any of the jurors come up and say, uh, look, I, I really don't think I could be fair and impartial uh, because I'm a victim of abuse or my brother or sister was a victim of abuse? I, I think it was similar to uh, Justice's question. They, uh, the judge conducted an in, uh, individual, if you will, back in the chambers. Uh, I think he asked for a show of hands for various ones, and then they, they were brought back, and he went through a series of questions, uh, the racial questions, the uh, insanity questions. And, uh, and, the, and there was one, I believe it was one woman, who I think was from Fall River, okay. who indicated that she was a victim of uh, abuse at one time. Mr. Connolly. And that was the extent of it. In response yes, to Justice Watson, you said, you, you know, the, the jury knew that it was a stabbing and the jury knew that it was a girlfriend. You started off your argument by saying this is power control, and I think you recognize that there are, you know, the stabbing of a girlfriend can occur in endless circumstances. Self Any number of circumstances, doesn't did, did the Did the judge, in telling the jury generally, I mean, being careful not to tilt the jury, um, indicate that this wasn't, for example, a melee outside a bar or something. This was um, what, what we would commonly call domestic violence, abuse. I, I believe it was, he was not specific with regard to the circumstances of the, uh, the surroundings of the killing. Uh, with regard to the whereabouts, if that's what Your Honor was uh, No, I was really thinking, you know, if, you know, domestic abuse can take many forms, and if one is the victim of domestic abuse, you may not necessarily think stabbing would be included in that. Uh, I don't believe that. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, uh, find, we, we can find check, my place. We can check well, in any record. event, as things stand right now, uh, right now, uh, asking such questions is purely discretionary. With the yes, judge. Your Honor, and and I think he covered the. Uh, in the general questions, enough to, uh, as he said, ferret out anybody with, with such a with a bias such as that. So I don't think he found a, subs a substantial risk, uh, uh, which would warrant any uh, any more anything more specific than what he already did. <clears throat> with regard to the um, other matters raised by my brother, um, the Commonwealth uh, theory uh, was that. Uh, that the defendant uh, was in fact criminally responsible for this uh, heinous act uh, of uh, stabbing his girlfriend uh, some 30 times in front of uh, his four-year or their four-year-old child and her eight-year-old, nine-year-old sister. Uh, the Commonwealth's uh, evidence was uh, very compelling with regard to to various aspects of the defendant's uh, intentional. Uh, conduct trying to control his behavior going back to when he uh, would be nice around the girlfriend with regard uh, near her father, uh, knowing that the father would not put up with any nonsense from the defendant. The defendant was controlled his behavior with regard to work. He was considered to be a good worker when he showed up. Uh, he was um, controlling. Uh, a control freak, if you will. Um, he, uh, the incident of May '99, uh, was an indication of his intentional control, manipulating his girlfriend Julie, and uh, by extrapolation, her friend, uh, who testified, Neil Harmon, uh, to control her behavior. She wasn't going to do anything. Uh, 
after that. He certainly wasn't going to do anything after that. This defendant was scheming. He uh, was nice when he knew it suited him, and he was nasty when he knew it suited him. That was one example. Um, he was controlling in that he wouldn't let her go to the bathroom in the house. Uh, he wouldn't let her go outside for cookouts or socialize. He um, was uh, jealous of her with regard to um, her getting a dress, a prom dress uh, for their prom, actually. Uh, she um, recovered some money in an insurance settlement. Uh, she was trying to make a life for herself. She, in spite of having the child, she continued on with high school. She was trying to get ahead with her life. He, on the other hand, was a sporadic worker. Uh, he was uh, pretty much uneducated, although street smart. Um, and he didn't like the way things were going. And he was, um, couldn't let her go. Uh, he made telling comments. Uh, to uh, the mother's uh, boyfriend, Larry Toombs. Um, hey, we break up. She ain't going nowhere. Uh, if I, uh, later on, if I can't have her, uh, no one else will, something to that effect. That was overheard by uh, a worker at the house um, not, too, too, not too long before the uh, murder. The uh, evening of the murder, he said to uh, someone, I'm sick of her, I'm sick of her. They were at the Walmarts uh, hours before the, uh, the killing. Um, at the time of the killing itself, he was controlled enough to, uh, well, even before that, at the time of the, of the stabbing and the first attack, he was saying, if I can't have you, no one will, and began his attack. When he was interrupted by uh, Mr. Toombs, um, he was not a control enough to start flailing, to stabbing Mr. Toombs. Uh, he was found not guilty of any assault of Mr. Toombs. He didn't change his attack. Instead, he deliberately went into the kitchen, um, supposedly to get his clothes. Uh, uh, let me, let me uh, move, move back. I have my chronology wrong. He began, he began attacking her then was uh, interrupted by Toombs. Toombs told him to leave. He left, supposedly, according to Toombs' way of thinking, to leave the apartment. Instead, he deliberately gets his large kitchen knife, comes back, has the presence of mind to pretend to look for his clothes, and then begins his attack, saying, if I can't have you, no one will. <clears throat> Toombs, uh, this is in front of the two children. Toombs, uh, tries to uh, stop him at that time, and that's why I mentioned he doesn't turn around and start stabbing Toombs all over the place. Toombs actually leaves the apartment to run for help, having asked one of the little girls to find the cell phone, which she can't. Uh, the poor victim goes from the bedroom which he was attacked initially on all fours and starts crawling away to bedroom number two, and he stalks her. He continues on, and then he he continues his vicious attack. Um, and she's trying to, the kids are yelling, the, the victim is uh, in the process of trying to resist. The defendant, uh, once he completes his despicable behavior, uh, calmly leaves the apartment, is found uh, an hour or two later by the uh, two uh, Amtrak workers, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, is very polite and respectful at that time. Uh, this, this man was a uh, uh, perfectly sane at the time. There's an ample evidence for the jury to reject the insanity defense. And the, uh, the fact that uh, two of the witnesses uh, were asked uh, questions uh, with regard to um, raised by my brother. The first one, the person did make an explanation, I believe. Uh, I've stated in my brief that the second question was perhaps uh, uh, inartful, or was inartful, but in any event, it was intended to elicit from the witness whether they noticed any uh, odd behavior. 
Um, the litany of uh, conduct I just mentioned um, was admitted, um, and to the extent that it was bad acts, it was per per excuse me, perfectly admissible uh, for the um, for the reasons to show the relationship to the hostile <coughs> nature of it, to show the state of mind in particular of the defendant. It's very probative of the defense uh, of the issue, rather, of criminal responsibility. It's very probative of that. As well as, I know my brother says the only issue was, uh, was the uh, criminal responsibility. However, the Commonwealth is still had to put in the case with regard to the underlying Crime. What, what was the background of the, the, the two witnesses who answered the question about insanity? Uh, it was, and what I'm wondering about is could the jury been mistaken that they maybe did have some superior knowledge or expertise? Uh, one was the mother who the victim lived with uh, part-time, split the time between the mother and the natural father, biological father. Was she a registered nurse or a doctor? Or? Oh, no. She uh, worked at the Christmas tree shop at the time of this. That's why she wasn't present at the time. And who was the other one, uh, the father? Was the father. And what did he do? Uh, he lived elsewhere. I think it was, he lived in another town. I don't think there was any evidence as to what his occupation was. Um, well, but clearly, the, well. more of the... Uh, the, the testimony seemed to be that the that the daughter initially spent time with both, and then at the time of this uh, matter, she was uh, probably spending more time, I think, uh, at the mother's house. Uh, but Toombs, Larry Toombs, was the mother's boyfriend, uh, and he was the witness that uh, was for the incident of October. He testified as to the physical. Uh, violent nature of it. He was also uh, the witness for the incident in November, um, which I think he actually was sitting, sitting on top of the, uh, of the defendant at the time. So I think uh, the jury was uh, well informed. The issues of, the issue of uh, criminal responsibility was uh, fairly tested, and it was, I suggest, no uh, reason for this court to uh, to change the uh, to conviction. Mr. Connolly, I have one question. You may not know the answer to it. The jury verdict, as I understand it, was returned in October 2000, and the um, assembly of the record wasn't completed until um, 2004. Uh, do you have any under uh, understanding of why we have this inordinate delay? Was it all trial transcript preparation? which appears to be on the docket, but the docket doesn't seem to I, be. I don't recall, Your Honor. I, there's like seven volumes, but um, well, he had uh, usually pending, I, He had a pending motion for new trial, I which wasn't denied till. But, um, I don't think. I think that was afterwards. 2005. I think that was afterwards. I, I don't recall if there was a problem with the transcript or not, Your Honor. I, I'm sorry. I can't answer that. And I, I, I realize it's not the Commonwealth's appeal, but sometimes um, it would be helpful if we could just make sure that... Yeah, if it's, usually if it's I try to uh, uh, satisfy myself as to how, what the, uh, what the road was to get the uh, appeal, but I, I'm just trying to blank at the I, moment. Is this an uncharacteristic delay or is it typical? I... Well, we're, we're working on it now, but it's a, it's, it seems to me that there's a... You know, the families here, and in any event, yeah, if, I, I if don't you, know. It, you don't know is the answer. I don't know. Let's say more questions or comments. We'll rest on this brief. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. All right.